evolution that wasn't academic or something about astrophysics because I, I noticed that you know this the phase shift of different stars like if you look at the night sky all those stars appear to be you know where they appear they are isn't where they're actually at because they're all vast different vastly different different distances vastly different distances away uh, like a, a star that's 50 light years away <clears throat> versus a star that's you know uh, 500 to you know several thousand light years away is going to have moved <clears throat> in those several thousand years a lot more than that star in 50 years so there's going to be a phase shift and um and that's just the night sky when you go into you know telescopes like the Hubble and stuff and take pictures that extend out you know the they can take pictures of stuff you know hundreds of thousands of millions of light years away even you know maybe even billions those things have moved a great deal since then <clears throat> where they don't appear because the light you're receiving is from that long ago so if you corrected the faith shift, I was thinking that it would uh, perhaps, you know, I was like, what if it, what if it ended up being a straight line overall? Just a big straight line. You know, what would that do about theories of the Big, ba big Bang? Because I didn't really believe in the Big Bang. Because uh, it's just, um, there's, well, I, I talk about it <clears throat> on another uh, I did. I talked about it several years ago after discussing it with astrophysicists from different colleges online, and uh, pretty much most of them, in the end, they admit that yeah, I'm right. There's really uh, no uh, reason, even much less proof, to believe that there was a Big Bang. Because uh, I mean, <clears throat> if you take into account the Great Inflation, happened in uh, point ten to the negative thirty third seconds. And that's uh, you know, infinitesimal time, you know, uh, instantaneous basically, and expanded millions, probably billions of light years within that time, and also at the same time, time and space began to exist, um, since it's a, it was a singularity beforehand. And if that was the case, you know, they, since you know, there's been a question, well, that, that means, how can everything expand that fast? If it's expanding even the speed of light, it's supposed to, supposedly, according to theory, supposed to reach infinite or zero mass, and then it would cause another collapse. So they came up with, oh, well, that's, that's true, but it wasn't the objects in, in space that expanded, it was space itself. But then you have the uh, question of how, what's the difference between the singularity and the post-inflation universe. Uh, and there's really none. Because, I mean, <clears throat> if the space is expanded, had there not having been any definition of space beforehand, since it was a singularity, even you know, like space just e immediately existed which, you know, and time. Time and space just became, basically. Uh, and there's no, you can't see any, there's no evidence or even possible, uh, you can't even possibly study the electromagnetic energy before the Great Inflation because there isn't any. <laughs> it's impossible to see before the moment directly after the Great Inflation. So all they have is the inflation uh, all they have is information <clears throat> supposedly from directly after the great inflation and uh, if you really look at it it doesn't entail that there was ever a singularity it's just an assumption and uh, the whole idea of space expanding is also just an assumption because there really would be no difference between the singularity relatively and the expanded space uh, directly after the Great Inflation, because it'd be relatively the same, the disbursement of energy, electromagnetic energy, or uh, gluons, and uh, uh, um, quarks, you know, uh, 
that's neither here nor there either. Because, I mean, if uh, before, obviously those would have formed directly afterwards, or direct right during the Great Inflation. Uh, well, obviously, but, you know, it seems to me. But uh, if it was the space that expanded, that means they already existed. They were just relatively, well, they were relatively the same. They were just smaller, but there wasn't any space to begin with before the Great Inflation. So it's really a moot point. There's really no point for singularity. All we can ever, all we can tell and all that's practical and all that even, all that exists in space and time is the fact that space and time began at that moment and all of a sudden there was this universe that was a huge size and it was expanding. Everything else is based on assumption because they don't want, and, they, and, and dogma basically, because they don't want to go back and say, well, the Big Bang seemed that way with the raisin loaf and everything expanding and it seemed like everything was expanding and it made sense that it came from a particular point, but then we studied it and we found that that can't be because it'd have to expand faster than the speed of light, so we came up with space expansion. But then, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to say that the foundation, any of the foundations have errors. Because then they feel like the academia is not sound. And then they feel like they're going to lose their, uh, the, uh, they're going to lose the respect they have from the people. And, um, uh, but they've been holding on to that for so long. If they'd just admitted their mistakes, they wouldn't lose their respect because they wouldn't have been uh, bullshitting. And now when it comes to, in the 21st century, when it becomes quite clear, which it will, they're going to lose all the respect from, from people because they're going to be, it's going to be obvious they're bullshitting. And they're probably doing it on purpose. I mean, they, I don't think that, astro, I mean, there's a lot of, you talk to astrophysicists, a lot of them don't even believe in it. And a lot of them certainly don't believe in a, uh, uh, infinite or they have differing opinions but nobody gets funding unless their research is based off the assumption of the Big Bang just like nobody gets funding unless their genetic research and whatnot is based off of evolution current evolutionary theory and nobody gets funding unless uh, you know their environmental work is based off of the assumption of global warming see that's how they get their funding and that's why they get their projects done. And that's why the science keeps perpetuating the current uh, ideas and is leading to just, a, a, it's leading to mind control. And uh, because people are afraid to question things that are of the system. 